Recently I was asked um, to talk about how I title my paintings and um, I'm not quite sure why, the, why I was asked because I always find this really difficult. But I've come to, um, I've got a few strategies up my sleeve now which I use which makes it a little bit easier so I thought I'd share those with you today. There's a couple of schools of thought about titling paintings, naming your painting. One is um, that, you know, some people they um, want to use the title to help describe the painting and um, uh, and then the other school of thought is that you create mis sort of mystique around the painting and you don't help, um, well you can help to some degree but your title isn't a literal description of the painting. So for example if you painted a painting of a blue chair you might call it blue chair. So that's, that's you know, describing the painting. Um, or an, alternatively to that, in the other school of thought, if you painted the blue chair, you might call the painting, you know, refuge or comfort or, um, you know, I don't know what, <laughs> parking place, I don't know. Anyway, um, as you can see, I'm not too good at this. How do I title my painting. I don't like to give a literal um, description because I think that, especially in abstract artwork, um, you want to leave it open for the viewer to, um, to interpret it in their way. But what you're trying to do with a title is to help someone have a connection to your artwork. It's all about connection because that's the way that somebody is going to respond to it and feel that, you know, it resonates with them, if they can make that connection. So um, the, the, the words you use in your title are actually really important and they do need to be given a fair amount of thought. I'm not so keen on titles where it is, um, you know, construction 101.23 or, you know, Haystack 51 or something, that sort of thing, where you just have one word and you number them. Um, that's, I guess, what you could do if you were doing a, um, a, a series of paintings all along the same lines, but um, they're not very interesting as titles and they're not, not offering you anything more than the painting. So uh, what I like to do with my titles is to try and find something that will help someone connect but leave it still open for them to make their own connections to be able to bring their experience to the painting. When I'm really stuck, I ask my Instagram followers. And one time I did this, uh, somebody came up with that absolutely brilliant title and I just pinched it, stole it and, and used it. And it was for this painting, which I couldn't think of a name for, and this person, who I'll be forever grateful for, came up with the title Waiting on Tables. Now why is that title so good? For one thing, it's short and it's snappy, just three words. It kind of refers to the painting because um, the painting has got sort of squares in it that look that could be um, interpreted as tables. And they've also um, got sort of lines between them which could, you know, be interpreted as the path from one table to the next and going back and forward and all the rest of it. So it was, that's a re I thought that was a really clever um, title for that painting. It's not descriptive, it offers an idea, but it's kind of um, obtuse enough to be, um, well it sort of helps you to lead into the painting, it helps you to maybe interpret the painting in that way, and it's something that is, um, you know, everybody at some stage waits on a table, whether it's in a restaurant or at home or whatever, we've all taken stuff and walked around the table and da 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 so it, it, has a, it has a connection with, with um, you know, everybody really. So that's another thing about choosing a title is that you don't want it to be so obtuse that somebody can't connect. So choosing things like fairy tales or song lyrics or poems or, you know, we can get words out of those that, that maybe are familiar to people. Um, these are all things that we could have in common and that could help people to connect. If they have some sort of 
um, relationship to the painting. I mean, you've got to sort of try and make some sort of connection, but it doesn't have to be literal. Another process that I use is to use the dictionary. And I'll just open it up randomly at certain at different pages. It's completely random, and I just stab my finger and see what it lands on, and pick out you know words that maybe could 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 be put together. So I'd be looking for a noun, a verb, and an adjective. One of one that I came up with um, was cat chasing cerulean. Now I don't paint cats, but I can use cerulean. So if there's something there that um, can connect with the painting, then, you know, you're home and hosed. <laughs> so this painting, as I'm um, painting it and coming close to finishing it, was sort of feeling to me like it was, it was loud and it was a big, blousy sort of woman. And I sort of thought that um, if you went somewhere, somewhere with this woman, she would have bright red lipstick and um, her name might be Rose, and she would probably have a big, tall, you know, nice um, Sunday, <laughs> strawberry Sunday, and um, just so putting the word Sunday, Sunday with red lips, Rose, um, kind of came together. And I sort of, I, it was kind of fun. It sort of describes, um, uh, you know, it has a it has a sort of a fun feel to it, and it kind of relates to the big loudness of that painting. So that's that one. Um, this painting here, I called Redefining Boo. And that's because it's quite a surprising painting. It came about very quickly and it sort of surprised me that, that it came about so quickly and so, and, and it was one of those ones that happened very easily, well not easily, but it just happened quickly and it was great. And it's sort of, it's a, it was a surprise. And so, um, I caught, and you know, when you get a surprise, or when you give someone a surprise, you can say boo. And so I called it redefining boo. And, um, that's what that painting is about. Um, this other painting here, as, it, as I was coming close to, um, finishing it, it took on a, I could see that it looked a little bit like a hot air balloon. Or traveling in a hot air balloon and so instead of going to and calling it something like traveling in a hot air balloon um, I thought um, I did a bit of research into into um, traveling in hot air balloons and weather and um, air currents and things like that and I came up with thermal lift and so I called it thermal lift so it sort of is related to my initial idea, but it sort of, and so it does connect you to that sort of idea about being above the air, above the earth and, and the sort of thermal lift that you would have in a, in a hot air balloon or whatever. But it's just related to the initial idea that relates to the painting and hopefully makes that connection. So those are some of the ways that I, uh, come up with titles. But, um, a really good idea is to have either something in your phone or a notebook that you write these things down so that if you do find a really good arrangement of words or you hear some lyrics on the song, um, in a song or you see some sign or something, um, that you can take a note of them and have a sort of a bank of possible titles. And even if you, when you are titling a specific painting, you start at that bank and you play with those ideas and make make something, you know, you sort of adapt one of those ideas to have more of a connection to the painting that you're looking to, to title, then at least it gives you a starting point. So I hope those ideas have been helpful. And um, if all else fails, you can always change the name. That's the other thing as well, is that often if I come up with a title, and it, I know that it's not quite right. Over time, I will change it, and um, gradually, I will get closer to a title that fits more happily. So people change their names, and I think we have every right to change the titles of our paintings if we want to. Okay, I hope that helps.